During the early 1900s, many Mexican nationals began to leave their homeland disrupted by the Mexican Revolution in pursuit of a better life. They migrated north following jobs working in railroads, meatpacking plants, and farm labor. Many settled in the west side community of Kansas City, Missouri. What brought this center about was the migration of the Mexican immigrants to Kansas City to work on the railroads. And both the Santa Fe and the Burlington Northern Railroads needed to recruit laborers. Eventually, they needed the labor year-round, and then eventually they started bringing their families. There had been a, a revolution going on in Mexico for 10 years. People were tired of it. A lot of them had lost either family members or friends, so a lot of them initially were living in boxcars, and, and they struggled. Even if for those that did find housing, it was, it was very difficult because there was so much racism. I guess one factor that kind of bonded them with some residents here in Kansas City was most of the Hispanic immigrants that came, a lot of them were, were Catholics. There was two priests that had moved up into this neighborhood in the West Side. They saw the needs of these people, that the new immigrants coming up here, how can we help them? As a result of having that religious connection, they started the Guadalupe Center. There was a, a women's society called the Amber Club. They're the ones that saw the need. They said, hey, we need to help these people. These are, hey, they're Catholics like us. Besides that, they need some human dignity. How can we help them? Dorothy Gallagher then came later. She started in 1922 and was here till about 1946. She was in the headmaster. Without her, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have had to send her here. And then she'd take care of all of these children that needed love. They were all her children. They referred to her as the fairy godmother of the West Side. She did so many things to help people get acclimated and to deal with the transition of becoming assimilated to this country. Upon their arrival, Mexican immigrants faced yet another hardship, discrimination. Mexican children were not allowed into certain schools, while their parents were not allowed to work, shop, or receive services in many places. To answer this growing need, a Catholic women's club in 1919 established a volunteer school and clinic in the West Side. In them days, an Hispanic could only work at the packing house, railroad, put on uh, construction jobs, jobs that uh, were very hard and outside in the elements. This center provided the services specifically for Mexican immigrants. General Hospital here didn't start taking Mexicans until the 60s also. You know, that was how segregated it was. We had a, a swimming pool here at Penn Valley Park. We were allowed to go there one hour on Mondays and Thursdays. There was a, a bunch of Anglo kids that would sit up on top of the hill where we were and when we came out, we had to run under this bridge here on Summit because they were waiting for us with baseball bats and, and uh, chains. There were a lot, a lot of prejudice going on before the war, but after the war, things started to change. The effects of World War II were felt nationally as well as on the west side. Many young men and women left Kansas City to serve our country and not all of them returned. After the war, the social landscape had changed for Hispanics in Kansas City in terms of housing and services, but segregation at large still remained in schools, neighborhoods, and jobs. When they came back, a lot of the young guys that had went to fight, it was like, okay, we fought for our country. A lot of us, you know, some of our friends died, didn't come back. We paid our dues, and so a lot of things opened, especially housing. Pretty much after that, if you could afford to, you could move outside the areas. There were still areas that were limited, and that really made it more accessible for other parts of the city for people to move in. During the summer of 1951, Midwestern states, including Kansas and Missouri, experienced torrential downpours and record-breaking floods that forever changed Kansas City's urban landscape and the people living there. This resulted in a mass migration of Latinos moving to the west side for support. I lived in Armordale. The flood came and wiped out our community, and so we moved over here to Kansas City, Missouri. My family was all in Kansas Avenue, which it got quite a bit of them. And my father used to tell us stories about how people would chase the cows and uh, go grab the meats. It ruined a lot of people. The water down on 24th Street was up to the roof of the houses. And that's when all the packing houses were ruined. So. A lot of people lost their job. You know, a lot of the neighborhood here started bringing some families in here and help them out. It was really bad. A lot of them came over here and, and uh, got food and things for life, you know, that uh, we needed for survival. Life after World War II proved the West Side to be an ever-changing ethnic community. Major construction on roads like Southwest Traffic Way and I-35 meant constant change and movement for residents. First-generation children began to navigate the realities of more war remnants of segregation, and the beginnings of the civil rights and Chicano movements. Some Kansas Cityans embraced these movements more than others, though the effects of activism were felt by all. Mm -hmm.